Dorothy L. Sayers is well known for her Lord Peter Whimsy stories. But now on for Extra, as we approach the Easter weekend, we begin her collection of 12 plays about the life of Jesus Christ. This is a 1967 World Service production, but when the original was broadcast during World War II, it created a great deal of controversy. The epic dramatisation begins with the arrival of wise men who tell of a newborn king. to be king, a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ. The first play, Kings in Judea. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Oh, stop strumming, you idle monkey. Oh, now let me see. It's my throw. Four, six, two. Your throw, Captain. Yes. Five, three, six. You win, Captain Proctor. What was all that noise in the street last night, right under these palace windows? Disgraceful. A bunch of fools have got hold of some rumour or other. Ah, three sixes. Beat that if you can, my lord Ephraim. Rumour? What about? Mm, oh, nothing. Just an excuse for rioting. They're saying in the marketplace that Judea is to have a new king. Now then, my lad, none of that. No, boy, you've no business to repeat such a thing. It's treason. It wasn't me. Those strangers who arrived yesterday told the doorkeeper... You that... heard what I said. You eat and shout. I've got ears. So's a donkey, long ones with fur on them. They get that way with listening to gossip. Well, have it your own way. But all Jerusalem's talking about it. That's quite enough. You hop it, my lad. And take that confounded musical box of yours with you. Stay in the antechamber, and when the strangers present themselves, show them in. All right. And if I catch you talking treason again, I'll have you whipped. There's no king here but King Herod. You understand? God save King Herod! And no emperor but Augustus Caesar, get that? Hail Caesar! That's right. Now clear out. <laughs> Jack and apes. I say, Captain Proclus, I don't like this at all. The king's a very sick man, and when he dies, there's going to be trouble about the succession. I hope to goodness there won't be a civil war. Not if Caesar knows it, there won't. Herod's been a strong ruler in his time, but between you and me, he can't last out the year. Mm, that's bad. These things leak out and cause a lot of unrest. Some firebrand might get up and start a movement for Jewish independence. Well, they'd better not try. These rumours are a bad sign. Jerusalem's full of riffraff come up to register under the new census. The least thing might set a match to the fire. Mm, you think so? Well, only last week. There was a story going round about angels appearing at Bethlehem and proclaiming a new messiah. Oh, it was only a, some country bumpkins. Well, who are these strangers the boy was chattering about? Anybody that matters? Oh, heaven knows. Foreign princelings of some kind with outlandish names. They say they're astrologers and have brought the king a complimentary message from the stars. Oh, oh, oh then he may see them. Herod has a weakness for fortune tellers. This way, my lord. Follow me, my lord. King Balthazar, desiring audience of King Herod. 
Greetings. 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 Pray be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, go and inform His Majesty that these lords have arrived. Yes, my lord. I trust, sirs, that the king will be able to receive you, but you know that he is an old man and has been ill for many weeks. We are very sorry to hear it. Very sorry. Very sorry. You will be careful not to say anything that may vex him. Oh, he will be glad of our embassy. We are the messengers of great good fortune. To him and to his son, the great and mighty king that is to be. That's very interesting. Which son? Captain Proclus, please, not so loud. Uh, you see, gentlemen, the political situation is a little complicated. If you are fortune tellers... Look, fortune oh, tellers? Perhaps you could give me a hint. We are not fortune tellers. Only a hint. Be quiet, you fool. He's coming. One must look after one's interests. King Herod! God save King Herod! me down carefully. If you shake me, your bones will pay for it. Uh, here, slaves, here. Uh, will it please your majesty to lie on this couch? In my chair. In my chair of state. Fool and traitor, what would you make of me? I am King Herod still. And for many a long year, please God. In my chair of state. Here. <laughs> so. Now then. Who are these foreign princes, and what do they seek at the hand of Herod, king of Jewry? O oh, king, live forever. I am Caspar, king of Chaldea. I am Melchior, king of Pamphylia. I am Balthazar, king of Ethiopia. Royal brothers, you are all three most heartily welcome. We are magi, humble searchers after hidden wisdom. I am the more honoured by the visit. I love the company of good and learned men. To you, King Herod, and to the whole realm of Judea, we bring glad tidings from the high lords of heaven. Glory and dominion to the uttermost ends of the world. This is good tidings indeed. Therefore, O King, in the name of the Most High God, we pray you to grant us our heart's desire. Ask what you will, our royal favour and bounty are open to you. Show us, we beg you, the noble child himself. Child? What child? Show us him that is born King of the Jews. King of we have seen Jews. his star in the east and have come to pay homage to him. Sirs, I do not understand you. Do not deny us. We have journeyed many miles for this. We know that the boy is born, and in our books we read how the truth should be made known in Judea and in the house of the lion, which is the house of Judah. Judah! Oh, my lord, you have touched him nearly. He is an Idumean, he is not of Judah's line. I beseech you, my lord. What are you muttering there? Proceed, sirs, proceed. Then we took horse and rode across the desert, and as we sat by night beside the waters of Arabah, we saw the rising of the star. And all the rulers of the firmament were gathered to do honor to that star. Have a care, you little lords. Who sent you hither to mock me? Indeed, sirs, you do not know what you're saying. I think there's treason here. Who sent you? Herod, Herod. I warned you not to vex him. I say, who Herod. sent you? Answer me, or I'll have your ancient and lying tongues torn out by the roots. Our commission is from the gods and from the god of gods. Silence and mount back. Pray, sir, control yourself. Leave me alone, Captain Crocus. <laughs> 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 Noble kings, learn it, Major. I beg you to forgive me. You took me by surprise. You see, no son has been born to my queen, Elpis, and me. Who is it, then, that shall sit upon my throne and rule an empire? My lord, we do not know. But it is written in the heavens that he that is born shall be both priest and king. Priest and king. Priest? Are you sure? So it is written. This is serious. You do not know the history of this kingdom. For many years it was torn by wars and rebellions till Augustus Caesar took it under the protection of Rome. Under his imperial mandate, I, Herod, assumed the crown. For 30 years I have kept the peace by force and policy. It has not been easy. 
There have been continual revolts against the Roman order, all made, do you understand, in the name of religion. Religion has been the pretext for political ambition. It was I, Herod, that broke the power of the Hasmoneans. They were the priestly house. They claimed to sit upon this throne and rule as priests and kings. They were traitors to Rome and to me, and I slew them. I slew my own sons for treason. I slew my queen, my first queen, Mariamne, whom I loved. My queen and my sons, whom I loved. Sir, do not distress yourself and us. Mm. They were traitors. Their children are traitors to this day, conspiring against me, conspiring against Rome, looking always for the warrior messiah that shall lead them to victory and independence. The only safety for this country lies in playing her part within the great new order of imperial Rome. My lord, it is written in the stars that the man born to be king shall rule in Rome. In Rome also. What do you say to that, Captain Proclus? Nothing. I am a soldier. It is my business not to say, but to do. If Caesar wants deeds, Caesar will command. Hmm. Mark that, Sir Kings. You prophesy. Herod reasons. But Caesar will command. <laughs> <laughs> My lord, if your majesty's dog may presume to speak, may not these learned kings have made some error in their calculations? After all, we have no confirmation. Your majesty's court magicians have issued no official prophecy in connection with this uh, alleged astral appearance. Then you can tell me, my lord Ephraim, have you yourself seen the star these wise men talk about? The star? Oh, yes, yes, my lord, a very bright star indeed, quite remarkable. And what do you make of it? Oh, doubtless, my lord, a most happy conjunction of fortunate planets, of ever-blessed augury for Jerusalem and for the high, mighty and resplendent house. I've heard all that before. You have read the Jewish prophecies? Yes, magnificent. Where do they say that the Messiah of the Jews will be born? Uh, sir, it is said in Bethlehem of Judea. Bethlehem? For so, if I remember rightly, it is written in the book of the prophet Micah. Thou, Bethlehem, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth that is to be ruler in Israel. Bethlehem! <laughs> then, my wise princes, you will not have far to go. Though I doubt if you will find much when you get there. A very squalid little village. It is not usual for kings to be born in such a collection of mud walls and sheep coats. <laughs> Boy! Your Majesty! Tell the groom of the stables to prepare horses for these gentlemen and set them on the road to Bethlehem. Immediately! Withdraw, both of you, Captain Proclus and Lord Ephraim. I would speak with these royal astrologers in private. Yes, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. And Haki. Keep your mouth shut. Oh, we are the king's slaves. God save your majesty. God save your majesty. Shut the doors. Gentlemen, you see how I am placed. Men call me tyrant and autocrat, but I am not my own master. The grip of Rome is on Judea, and I cannot openly countenance revolt. But if it please heaven to raise up a leader in Israel, then I am ready, heart and soul, to strike a blow for Jewish independence. May I trust you? It is no part of our commission to betray the counsels of kings. It is well. Now tell me, when exactly did this royal star appear? We beheld its light in the east twelve days ago. Twelve days. And in our books we read how the truth shall be made known in the house of the lion, which is the house of Judah. In the house of the lion. The lion of Judah, the house of David. It may be so. Bethlehem is called the city of David. Did you know that? And the scriptures speak of Bethlehem. Priest and king. Have you calculated his horoscope? What sort of a man will this be that is born to be king of the Jews? Tell me this, will he be a warrior king? The greatest of warriors, yet he shall be called the Prince of Peace. He will be victor and victim in all his wars and will make his triumph in defeat. And when his wars are over, he will rule his people in love. You cannot rule men by love. 
When you find your king, tell him so. Only three things will govern a people, fear and greed and the promise of security. I have been a stern ruler, dreaded and hated, yet my country is prosperous and her borders at peace. But wherever I loved, I found treachery. Wife, children, brother, all of them, all of them. Love is a traitor. He has betrayed me. It betrays all kings. It will betray your Christ. Give him that message from Herod, king of Jury. Sir, when we have found the Christ. Oh, true, I'd forgotten. When you find him, return and let me know. We must work quickly and cunningly. The patriotic party only need a leader and a name. Some name that will unite instead of dividing them. They will not support me because I am not of Jacob's house. But if I myself go and swear allegiance to this royal child, then they will all fall into line behind me. So will you do me this favor and guide me to the young king's feet? The high gods permitting, we will certainly do so. I thank you from my heart. For your visit, your good news, and the great opportunity shown me, Herod is grateful. Forgive me, I find it difficult to move. Do me the favor to strike upon that gong. Remember, no word of this to my people if you value your young king's safety. We will be silent. Your Majesty desires... The princes are leaving immediately for Bethlehem. See them to their horses. Yes, magnificence. Farewell, sirs. Farewell. Fools. May their own prophecies choke them. But there is danger. Very grave danger. Let me think. To seize the child. That's the first step. To kill him straight away. That's the simplest. But if only we can implicate all the rebels. Tempt them to show their hand. Then strike and clear out the whole hornet's nest at once. Yes. <laughs> that is the way. That is Herod's way. When the wise men had heard King Herod, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was, in Bethlehem. Ziller? Ziller, have you laid the table? Uh, yes, Mother. Then run and tell Carpenter Joseph his supper's ready. You'll find him out at the back. Yes, Mother. Carpenter Joseph, supper's ready. No, Mother Mary. Let me take the baby and lay him in the cradle while you have your bit of supper. Come along, lovey. Aren't you a beautiful boy, then? There. Now off you go to sleep like a good boy. It is always wonderful good, I need. Never cries hardly at all. Happiest baby I ever see. He is happy in your kind home. But when he was born, he wept. Ah, they all do that. And can you blame them, poor little things, seeing what a cruel, hard world it is they come into? Never mind. Mary? Oh, here's your good man. Come along, Carpenter Joseph. There's a nice dish of broiled meat for you. I'm sure you need it working so late, too. I wonder you could see what you were doing. It's a fine night. That great white star shines nearly as bright as the moon. Right over the house, seemingly. I mended the fence. Isn't it a real bit of luck for us, you being such a fine carpenter? And so kind, doing all these jobs about the place. Well, that's the least I can do. When you've been so generous and shared your home with Mary and me... Isn't it, Mary? Yes, Joseph. Well, we couldn't leave you in that old stable over in the inn. We'd never have slept easy in our beds knowing there was a mother and baby without no proper roof to their heads. Especially after what my husband the shepherd told me about seeing them their angels and the little boy being the blessed messiah and all. 
Them, for Mary. You take and eat that. It'll do you good. Oh, thank you. Do you think it's really true what my husband the shepherd said about him being the promised saviour as is to bring back the kingdom to Israel? I know it is true. Oh, how proud you must feel. Don't it seem strange now when you look at him and think about it? Sometimes very strange. I feel as though I were holding the whole world in my arms. The sky and the sea the green earth, and all the seraphim. And then again, everything becomes quite simple and familiar. And I know that he is just my own dear son, and my sweet Jesus, whom I love. Nothing can ever change that. No, no more it can't. When all's said and done, children are a great blessing. What's gone with Zilla, I wonder? I hope she ain't run off too far. There might be wolves about. Mother! Ark! What's up now? Hello, my lass. What's the matter? They're coming here. They're coming here. Mm. Oh, they're coming, for goodness sake. Kings. Three great kings right now, back. They're coming to see the baby. Kings, indeed. But they are. They've got crowns on their heads and rings on their fingers and servants carrying torches. And they asked me, is this where the baby is? And I said yes. And they told me I was to run ahead and say they were coming. She's quite right. I can see them from this door. Yeah. Just turn in the corner by the palm tree. Oh, bless me. And the supper not cleared away and everything upside down. Uh, here, Mother Mary, let me take your plate. Yes. Oh, dear, that's better. Oh, look. One of the kings is a very old gentleman with a long beard and a beautiful scarlet cloak. Oh, and the second's all in glittering armour. Oh, and the third has got big gold rings in his ears and the jewels in his turban twinkling like stars. And, oh, his horse is white as milk with silver bells on the bridle. Fancy. And all to do honour to old baby. Joseph. My heart, Mary. It's all coming true as the prophet said. The nation shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Give me my son into my arms. Oh, to be sure. There. Oh, he sat on your knee as brave as a king on his golden throne. Oh, look at him now with a precious lamb. Mercy me, here they are. Is this the house? Come in, my lords, come in. Oh, oh please mind your heads. I fear it is but a poor and lowly place. No place is too lowly to kneel in. There is more holiness here than in King Herod's temple. More beauty here than in King Herod's palace. More charity here than in King Herod's heart. Lady clears the sun, fares the moon. The nations of the earth salute your son. The man born to be king. Hail Jesus, King of the Jews. Hail Jesus, King of the world. Hail Jesus, King of heaven. All, All hail. hail. God bless you, wise old man. Lady. And you, tall warrior. Lady. And you, dark traveler from desert lands. Lady. You come in a strange way and with a strange message. But that God sent you, I am sure. For you and his angels speak with one voice. Wise old man, you said... King of the Jews. Why, yes. They told me my son should be the Messiah of Israel. You said tall warrior? King of the world. Oh, that is a very great title. Yet when he was born, they proclaimed tidings of joy to all nations. And you, dark traveler from desert lands, you said... King of heaven. I don't quite understand that. And yet indeed they said that he should be called the son of God. You are great and learned men. And I am a very simple woman. What can I say to you? Till the time comes when my son can answer for himself. Alas, lady, the more we wise men know, the less we understand life. And the riddle that torments the world is this. Shall wisdom and love live together when the promised kingdom comes? Lady, we are rulers. And we see that what men need most is good government, with freedom and order. And the riddle that torments the world is this. 
Shall power and love dwell together when the promised kingdom comes? Lady, I speak for a sorrowful people, for the ignorant and the poor, and the riddle that torments the world is this. Shall sorrow and love be reconciled when the promised kingdom comes? Oh, these are very difficult questions. But with me, you see, it is like this. I am quite humbly born, yet the power of God came upon me. Very foolish and unlearned, yet the word of God was spoken to me. And I was in deep distress when my baby was born and filled my life with love. So I know very well that wisdom and power and sorrow can live together with love. And for me, the child in my arms is the answer to all the riddles. You have spoken a wise word, Mary. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is Jesus, your son. Caspar, king of Chaldea, salutes the king of the Jews with a gift of frankincense. O oh Mary, you have spoken a word of power. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is Jesus, your son. Melchior, king of Pamphylia, salutes the king of the world with a gift of gold. You have spoken a loving word, Mary, mother of God. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is Jesus, your son. Balthazar, king of Ethiopia, salutes the king of heaven with a gift of spices and myrrh. Oh, mother, look! At the great gold crown, look! At the censer, all shining with rubies and diamonds, and the blue smoke curling up. How sweet it smells, Zilla, and the myrrh and the aloes, and the sweet cloves and the cinnamon. Isn't it lovely? And all for our little Jesus. My lords, we are very grateful to you for all your gifts, aren't we, Joseph? Great kings, we thank you. And as for the words you have said, be sure that I shall keep all these things and ponder them in my heart. Well, royal brothers, the star still burns brightly outside our tent tonight. It has led us by unexpected ways. The treasures we chose for a king's palace serve now as playthings for a baby. <laughs> and what became of all the fine compliments and prophetic speeches we had prepared? I think we forgot our wisdom and could only ask questions like schoolboys. We were humbled. But then I find that all men's learning is ignorance, and all man's treasures are but toys. You are the wisest of us three, Balthazar. But come, let us sleep. We'll be ready for our journey tomorrow. Good Melchior, bid our musicians play softly in the outer tent. Music there. Let the harp and the flute sound softly together. What is it? Oh, what is it? The warning of a dream, Melchior. A sword in the path on the road to Jerusalem. How can I come to you? Where shall I find you? You, Balthazar, shall find me by the tall tree on the hill. By the tall tree on the hill. Call again. 
I am coming. It is gone. Caspar! Is that you, Melchior? <sighs> hmm? No, I, I thought it was you cried out. It was I who cried, Caspar. I had a dream. And so had I. And I? I dreamed I was going by night to Jerusalem, but the wind blew out my lantern. So I reached up to heaven and plucked down a star to serve for a light. And behold, a great darkness. And I fell down, 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 and woke to the sound of a voice calling me. I too was going up to Jerusalem, when suddenly the earth gaped open before me. So I drew my sword and crossed the chasm walking on the narrow blade. But when I was over, I found the point of the sword plunged in the heart of Mary, and in my ears was the desolate cry of a child. I also was going up to Jerusalem by a deep valley between mountain forests, and I heard the voice of Mary calling, Come back, come back, my child is lost in the hills. And I searched long among the thorns, for I knew that I never could reach the city until by the tall tree on the hill I had found the Christ. Brothers, I cannot think that these are idle dreams. I believe that if we return to Jerusalem, we shall find a sword in the path. We have looked into the heart of Herod and seen only the horror of great darkness. Do as you will, my brothers, but I will not return to Jerusalem. Then we are agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Ho there! Strike the tents, make ready our horses. We will return to our own country another way. Then Herod in Jerusalem, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath. Your move, my lord Ephraim. Oh, I beg your pardon, Captain. There. For heaven's sake, boy, stop strumming. How often am I to tell you it's not seemly with the king at the point of death in the very next room? It won't hurt him. He's too far gone to hear. I don't care. It gets on my nerves. I huff you, my lord. Oh, there now. How did I come to overlook that? Your mind's not on the game tonight. I was listening. Oh, will you stop making that noise? Hark, don't you hear shouts in the distance? I think something's happening up near the temple. Everybody's running that way. Oh, dear, oh, dear. We live in troubled times. Captain Proclus, if there's going to be a disturbance... Us, I... us. Somebody at the door. Yes? Who are you and what do you want? A letter to be delivered into the hand of King Herod. He's ill. You can't see him. Better leave it with me. My orders were into the king's own hand. But they're saying in the street, King Herod's dead. They've no right to say any such thing. The king is not dead, certainly not. He's not very well, that's all. You better sit down and wait. God of Abraham, what was that? Oh, I said a riot or something. There's a big crowd up by the temple. They've got torches. They're coming this way. The street's simply swarming. What are they shouting? I can't hear. Now the high priest has come out of his house. Oh, he took one look and went in again, double quick. Here they come. I can see them now. You'll be out of the window in a moment. Oh, they've torn down the eagle. They've done what? The eagle, the gold eagle from over the temple gate. They've pulled it down. Pulled down the Roman eagle? Get out, let me look. That disastrous eagle, it ought never to have been put there. It offends pious people. All oh, these fierce young men. Oh, heaven, we shall all be murdered. Oh, Captain Proclus, can't you do something? Hey there, you Jewish dogs. Come away, they're throwing stones. Oh, oh the Etruscan passes. In the name of the king. The king's dead. Run back to Rome, little soldier. Stand back from the window. The king. 
alive and walking. Oh, sir, you will not show yourself. They'll attack you. Silence, fool. Fetch torches. Torches, yes, a torches. Brockers, run to the torches. fortress. Turn out the guard. I want some. Here, boy. Yes, sir. Ah, are those the torches? Yes, sir. Well, give one to me, then. Yes. Here you are, boy, now, both of you. Hold them up to my face. Yes, yes sir. Lord. Oh, no, rebels. Do you know me? Do you know Herod? I see you do. I am obliged to you for the funeral oration. To be sure, it is a little premature. But Herod will not forget. Follow Stop me, you fellow! If anybody tries to leave while I am speaking, I will have him broken on the wheel. I observe that someone has been carried away by his enthusiasm for the imperial emblem. That eagle is not intended for private use as a garden ornament. However, Caesar shall be informed of your devotion. No doubt he will be delighted. Next time you wish to hold these public demonstrations of loyalty, would you kindly do so at a more convenient hour? You have disturbed my rest and roused all these worthy citizens from their beds. There, you see, the guard is coming to see what all the noise is about. I think you had better be getting home. Hey, there, is that Captain Darius? Yes, sir. Get hold of those four men with the eagle. And that fellow in green. And the gentleman with the hammer. And the two rabbis who are trying to sneak down off the rostrum. Then go to the high priest's house and put him under arrest. Let the other imbeciles go. Very good, sir. And report back to me with Captain Proclus. Very good, sir. Go on, lads, you've got your orders. Move along there. Off with you. Very pretty indeed. The high priest will answer for this behavior. My lord. Give me a chair. Yes, a chair. And some wine. Yes, magnificent at once. Oh, my lord, we were so afraid. We thought you were... Uh, that is, we thought... Are, are you sure you're not hurt? Stop, Jimmy, man. Here, slaves, pick up the lamp and sweep up all this mess. Who's that fellow in the corner? That? Oh, oh, he came with a letter. Huh? Yes, so he did. I'd forgotten all about him. A letter from whom? From the noble king of Chaldea. For your majesty's own hand. Caspar of Chaldea, give it to me. We have seen, we have heard, we have worshipped. Ten thousand plagues smite them. Leprosy seize their flesh. Listen to this piece of insolence. We have seen, we have heard, we have worshipped, but we may not return as we had promised, for the command of the Most High stands in our way. Farewell. Is that a way for one king to write to another? Abominable. I don't know what it means, but it's abominable. It means trouble. Worse than trouble, insurrection, civil war. Oh, but uh... I will defeat them yet. I will have order in Judea. I'll spread a net that their messiah shall not slip through. Proclus? Yes, sir. With Captain Darius to report everything quiet, sir. Good. Here's another order. Take a band of my Thracians. Go to Bethlehem. Search out every male child in the cradle. Children, sir? From twelve days old. No. I don't trust those magi. No. Take all the male children from two years old and under and put the lot to death. Kill them all. Sir, I'm a soldier, not a butcher. You will obey orders. I'm a Roman, and Romans do not kill children. Send one of your own barbarians. Insolent! You are a soldier in my pay. Excuse me, sir. I am in your service, but I am still a Roman born. You have the right to dismiss me. But if you imprison or execute me, I think there will be trouble. Darkness. You are a fool, but an honest fool. Captain Darius. Sir. You heard the order? Yes, sir. Carry it out immediately. Very good, sir. Am I to go back to Rome, if you please? Hmm? No. You mean well. But which is worse, 
to kill a score or so of peasant children or to plunge a whole kingdom into war. The Jews cry out for a messiah. Shall I tell you messiah's name? Fire and sword. Fire and sword. I will not have it. This country shall have peace. While Herod lives, there shall be but one king in Jewry. That is the end of the new Messiah. But the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod. Kings in Judea was the first of a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ. The man born to be king. In Man Born to be King by Dorothy L. Sayers, you heard John Westbrook as Jesus, with Gabriel Wolfe, Dennis Blakelock, Denise Breyer, Trevor Martin, James Dale, Michael Kilgariff, Paul Danqua, Robert Addison, Nan Marriott Watson, Joe Manning Wilson, June Tobin, Norman Shelley, Peter Marinka, and James Thomason. It was dramatised and produced by Raymond Rakes. And tomorrow, in the second play, the baptisms of a man of the wilderness called John, who ate only locusts and wild honey. The followers are flocking to the Judean wilderness for the King's Herald at the same time.